Ciao to all the listeners of whatever Oasis podcast Espanol. The first question of, on, on this part is, tell us how was your, the reaction of the members of the band when they read your book, Getting High for the First Time? Liam never read it. Really? <laughs> He was only interested in if there were pictures in it. Yeah. The day after Nebworth, Griggsy said to me, why don't you take a copy of the book round to Liam's? So I got the manuscript and we went round to Liam's. And Liam said, yeah, yeah, I really want to see it. I really want to see it. And we went into his room and I gave it to him. He said, what's this? Well, there's the book. I said, it's no good to me. I said, you said you wanted to see the book. So I just wanted to see the pictures. I thought all he was interested in was the pictures. <laughs> all of them really liked it. All of them just thought it was really good. Um, I think they were very... Um, Uh, I think they really respected the amount of effort I've put into it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You have the honor of writing a kind of dedication in the Morning Glory booklet. Do you remember when you wrote it and how did they ask you to do that? See, no one ever believes me, right? But I wrote that, that sort of prose for the morning glory sleeve, Noel asked me to write something. And I kind of thought, well, I need to do something surreal here. I wrote that at nine o'clock on a Sunday morning at my sister's in Surrey, completely and utterly sober after a good night's sleep. <laughs> Most people think that I was flying eye on LSD or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I wasn't. And um, um, it was funny because sometimes I'd meet people and they would go, you wrote that? That was amazing, blah, blah, blah. Um, but, but yeah, so I, I remember writing it and just thinking, wow. I love the line in there about the Royal Albert Hall being a bald egg. <laughs> I like that one. But, you know, uh, many fans have always appreciated that, that text. It's kind of an inspiration for many of the fans. And, and have you already uh, heard the album to write that or it was before? Yeah, no, I'd heard it, yeah. Okay. I'd, um, uh, one day I went down to the studio and it was just me and Noel and he played it to me. Okay. And, and then I would hear it round at Noel. So I had heard it, yeah. But it's great people think of it as an inspiration. I'm very... Um, I'm very humbled and honored by that. That's great. And, and how was that experience to hear for the first time what's the story of Morning Glory with Noel Gallagher at your side? Uh, pretty, pretty cosmic. <laughs> I mean, I knew, I mean, I knew a few of the songs because he'd, because they'd started up in, um, in Wales and then A week later, he was back in town because they'd had the big bust up with Liam. Mm -hmm. And they had Roll With It then and a couple of others. So I'd, I'd heard those. Um, and then um, and then they went back. And then when he came back, I heard some more of them then. And then when I went down to the studio, um, Yeah, because, yeah. I remember actually. I remember hearing Champagne Supernova at his flat in Camden. Mm. Uh, so I, I, I had most of it, but um, yeah. I mean, it, it was just, it was just. Um, I mean, it was a great summer. The weather was really good. It's not like now where you don't get summers anymore. But yeah, it just kind of fitted in with everything going on. It was just. It was really funny. There was a magazine here in London called Loaded. Yeah. And um, I, I knew the editor very well. He rang me up. He said, look, could you get us a Noel Gallagher interview? See, this is what I mean about how loose and how funny it was. So I said, okay. So I rang Noel up. He said, no, do you want to do an interview for Loaded? He said, yeah, that'd be great. He said, do you want to do it now? I said, okay, great. So I went round to his place in Camden. 
We went up, we did the interview, we went up to Regent's Park, the photographer did the photos. And then um, they, they, they had him on the cover the next month. And um, Creation Records went absolutely mad because they had this whole press campaign and Loaded weren't part of it. Yeah. And, you know, the fact that I, that I hadn't used the press officer and, and the press <laughs> officer wrote, wrote, wrote me this letter and he said, said, because of you, it could well be that this album will not sell any copies. <laughs> <laughs> And like 15 million copies later, I think <laughs> I think we kind of got I think we got away with that one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> funny, totally funny. But that's what I mean. It was it was you could do that then. It was such fun, you know. It was just you know, what are you up to? Do you want to do an interview? Yeah, great, man. You know, and that was it. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After, you know, it, then it stopped being fun. But okay. And and how does it feel that Noel Gallagher has dedicated the album to you? You know he didn't that, dedicate right? the album to me. He, he was. He, he didn't. He put a nice thank you in there, which was lovely. Um, so I was. Yeah, how does yeah, it I feel that? Very, sorry. How does it feel that, mate? Yeah, great. You know, it's beautiful, man. You know, it's lovely. Cool, cool. <laughs> Paulo, <clears throat> would you like to write the script for a future biopic, uh, Oasis? Uh, would I like to write a script for that? Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, you'd have to. Yeah, you know, I'm just working out in my head whether there would be because you know you have to do certain things in films. There's a filmmaker actually in Wales who's who's always wanted to do that. Um, the uh, I don't. Know, it's just hard to pull it off that stuff. Really, I mean, you'd have to really. You know, getting someone to play Liam especially would be quite challenging, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know. Yeah, well, you know. But it could, it could be possible, right? Because uh, we have seen... Yeah, anything's this, this... possible. Anything's possible. I mean, there's some great, you know, there's some great music films. Don't, don't know if you have seen this creation movie. No, I, I, I haven't seen that one. I'll tell you the one I liked a lot, though, was the yeah. Elton John one, Rocket Man. Oh, Okay. Yeah, I, I thought Man. they did that really well. I thought yeah, they did yeah, that. Yeah. Rocket yeah. Man is a great movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is. A, yeah, yeah, really good. Well, hopefully. Uh, okay, you witness the birth of friendship between Noel and Paul Weller. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they become such friends? Well, I think they. Uh... Well, they're, they're from similar backgrounds, so they kind of understood each other on that level. Noel obviously had a lot of respect for Paul, but Paul had a lot of respect for Noel as well because, you know, uh, he liked a lot of the songs that, that, that Noel wrote. Um, so, so there was a lot of mutual respect and then there was a lot of fun, you know, that that whole period was, you know, people loosening up and... Um, and they, you know, they had a lot of musical things in common, specifically the Beatles, um, you know, similar upbringing, not upbringings, but similar backgrounds, council estates, you know, so they kind of just, you know, they, um, and Noel's, Noel's a very charming, funny man, you know, it's hard to dislike him. Well, it, in, in those days, it was very hard to dislike him because he was just funny, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, um. Yeah, I mean, he, what did he used to call Paul? A victim. Vic, uh, there was a character here in a. It was quite. It was like in a TV thing called Victor Meldrew. He was a really grumpy old man. Mm. He used to call Paul Victor Meldrew with a suntan. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, he was. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It was funny stuff, you know. I remember that uh, performance of Paul and Noel with uh, they did Talk Tonight in 1995. Mm. Remember that? Yeah. When the White Room. Yeah, yeah, session. I was. I was there. For me, it was a surprise because the song was a B-side and it was a, a Noel song, not a Paul Weller song. And yeah. that, the detail that Paul Weller accepted to do that with Noel says that he admires him. Well, that, well yeah, yeah. yeah or I mean, at least the music, right? 
Yeah, yeah, there, there was a lot of uh, Noel's. I mean, there was a lot of stuff he didn't like by Noel, but, uh, you know, stuff that he, he did. And and Talk Tonight's a, a great record, you know, so. Yeah. I mean, Noel's done loads of gigs with Paul. He's come on as guest. and Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you keep some memorabilia from that time? You know, I was... Uh, I, I I never liked. <laughs> I I I don't know. I've I've never been one of those guys who who does that. Uh, I mean, when I was at the enemy, I interviewed loads of, you know, Stevie Wonder, Marvin Gaye, blah blah blah. I never kept the cassettes. Really, it's crazy. You know, I I I, I just think, oh, whatever. You know, I was always just really interested in writing. You know, just just focused on writing. So. I never thought to to, to, to keep get any yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got up there. I've got um, Noel gave me a um, a gold disc. Yeah, gold disc. Yeah. Oh, great, mate! Yeah, cool, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah that's enough. <laughs> More than enough. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I just exactly. Yeah, yeah. Enough. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And. Um, You have joined the band on different tours. Uh, is there any rock and roll star excess that you remember that and, and you said ah, this is too much for me? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there was one night in Chicago. So no, I don't know where we were, but I was on part of the American tour. Mm -hmm. I can't remember where we were, but we drove to Chicago. And me and Noel stayed, the band went to sleep on the coach, but me and Noel stayed up all night. And it, we got to the hotel, we kept drinking, but it got to about two o'clock in the afternoon. And he and I, I just had to go to bed. And he went, he went off and did a sound check and I fell asleep and I didn't wake up until nine o'clock and I completely missed the gig. Oh. Which they told me was one of the best that Oasis has ever played. <laughs> and that Noel was on amazing form, you know. Like, he played it. I mean, they, they, he did have a very, uh, he had a very strong constitution. Yeah. And uh, there was a couple of times when, when we were in the Johnny Depp house that you were talking about on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We stayed up all night then. And then we went and saw the Smashing Pumpkins in a studio. Yeah, yeah. And I remember sitting there thinking, I've just got to get home. So I left Noel to it, but he was going strong then. Oof. Yeah. He had a big, very strong constitution. And yeah. Yeah. Probably he was born to be a rock star, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> How was the first time you heard Noel play the master plan? Uh, tell us about that moment. Do you remember any other songs that you also heard for the first time? Well, hearing Live Forever for the first time. Wow. Uh, was just, you know, you just think, wow, this is something really special. Yeah. Um, and just, uh, yeah, I, yeah, hearing those two, I think those two in particular. Um, Oh, and don't, and don't Look Back in Anger, which is another really good song. But those two for me, um, Live Forever and The Master Plan, were like, I mean, I heard Master Plan at that studio in Fulham and, uh, you know, it was just, you know, the thing was with Noel, you kind of hear one song, you go, God, that's great, you know. And then you hear another one, you say, God, that's even better. That one's better, This, you know. And then to me, Master Plan was like the, you know, the, the peak of it all, really. It was just... Uh, yeah, that anecdote you tell on the, on the book, the first line. Yeah, yeah, book. yeah. I mean, that, that, that's, that's, why, that's why I opened with that, because I just thought it's such a, you know, such an amazing song. And I think that that section finishes with him going, and it's just a B-side. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, how top is that? It's just a B-side. 
and it was just whoa, you know, very serious song that one. And probably that song is or was made for Noel Boys, right? Do you ever yeah. think that Liam sung that or or something? No, I think the ones that Noel wanted to sing, he felt very uh, possessive about, and I think that. The fact that he gave so many songs to Liam to sing, obviously. Yeah. The, the fact that the ones that he really wanted to sing made them vocally much stronger. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. he wanted to sing them so badly, you know. Um, so, I, I, you know, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, I think that's why, that's why they work so well, you know. You were there like, in talk tonight. Yeah. You know, they're very personal songs, like talk tonight, you know. Exactly, exactly. Or half the world away, for example. Yeah, I don't I don't think you could say that Liam could sing them better, but it's more about the emotion and the you yeah. know getting the, yeah. the the song over. And you were there in that Sheffield Arena concert where Noel mm. played Don't Look Back in Anger for the first time. Right. Yep. yep. It was the first time. I mean, you never heard that. Maybe in the back. No, of the I, I haven't heard that. that before, no, 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 no. No. Sound check. Whatever. I think, they'd, I think they'd come from France, where there had been some shenanigans going on. Um. So I hadn't seen no. Uh. And then. Um, and then. Um, yeah. That. 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 Yeah. Sheffield Arena. That I remember a sort of bit of a. The kids kind of trying to break free and trying to pull the barriers down and <laughs> you know yeah and it was mad for him to play a new song on that gig right well that you know it was such a creative time you know they you know he was just he was just writing song after song and i think they just you know wanted to get it out. I mean, but like I said to you before, I mean, it was just amazing that year to that day, they were playing in a pub somewhere and now they were playing to 40,000 people. Yeah. It was just, it was just, it just showed you how this phenomenon, they were a phenomenon. They just yeah. come from nowhere. Yeah. Bang. Totally. And, they, and they, they were like the first rock band in a long time. You know, they looked like one, they acted like one, you know, no one had, You know, there'd been bands before who had little things going for them, but the Oasis had everything. You know, they had the package. It was the whole thing, you know. Yeah. I mean, the first thing I read of Knowles was an interview in ID magazine, and he said something along the lines of, um, oh, you know, I know I'm going to go into music business and be completely ripped off and end up back in the gutter, but, you know, if some of my songs are considered in the same way that, John Lennon and Stevie Marriott's are, or, you know, Ray Davis and Pete Townsend, then I'll be happy, you know. Yeah. And I thought, oh, oh yeah, this guy's interesting, you know. Yeah, and he, he's, and he's yeah. achieved that. He's yeah, achieved he achieved that, that exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Without, yeah. without that, yeah, yeah. But that right. band were just, you know, just, uh, just blew through, man. <laughs> just wow. Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay, so this is the last question. Uh, what do you think is the difference between Oasis from the Getting High book and Oasis from the Forever the People book? What change? Success, you know, huge success, success on a scale that, you know, blew, I just think it just blew, blew them off course. I think that, um, Like I say, you know, I think that if they'd taken a year off after Nedworth, uh, then things would have been a lot different. <clears throat> I just think that, um, you know, I think it went from being this amazing thing to kind of a bit... I've, I, wrote, I wrote somewhere that people join bands to escape nine to five jobs. You know, do you know what a nine to five job is? You know, like they call it nine to five here. You start at nine in the morning, you finish yeah. at five. Nine to five. Yeah. And you do, you know, and they, they're normally in factories or, you know, just mundane jobs. And you join bands because you want to avoid the 
you you don't want to do the nine to five yeah, slog yeah, yeah. exactly. But that after be here now, Oasis had found themselves in a five to nine <laughs> slog. You know, it it, Very, it, yeah. it just you know it just had become a corporate this treadmill. Stuff. It just became a treadmill. So you do an album. You tour the world, you have six months off, you tour an album, you do the work. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It just, uh, I, I just think, I just, uh, you know, I wasn't surprised when Gwigsy and Bonehead left, you know, because I think they felt it was just, it was just a slog, you know. I and mean, in that Be Here Now tour was a slog, whereas none of the other tours had been. And also, I, mean, I say in Forever the People that it was really noticeable that they kept talking about the old days. Mm. Oh, do you remember that time we were in the van and we were all smoking spliff and the cops stopped us and, and the doors and smoke came out and they, they never sussed it. And, yeah. You know, they, they kept talking about that all the time. And, you know, they got quite Mancunian, you know, because they kept thinking about Manchester and growing up there and, you know, what they got up to. And suddenly now all that had gone and it was now a different ball game. And, I don't think it was suitable to them, really. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah I mean, I yeah, think yeah. with some bands, to be honest, I think with some bands, some bands are really good at being, uh, you know, hugely like U2. You know, it's a machine. Totally. You yeah. Know. <laughs> you know, I mean, but you know, with some something like Oasis, where you know part of the thing was the danger of it all. You know the, you know. Is this gig even going to happen? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? The, you know, lead singer's just puked up somewhere, and he wants to have a fight with someone. Well, Do you know what I mean? Whatever the craziness was, you know, exactly, and the spontaneous, you know. You know? Yeah, you know the unpredictability. Exactly, I think they and, miss that. And, and, and when you get to that level of success, it's, it's the last thing people want is unpredictability. They want, right, you're going to be here at four o'clock, you're going to do yeah. a soundtrack at five. And... Everything scheduled and anything, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So so that's probably the difference between, in my very long and winding roadway, <laughs> is the <laughs> difference between getting high and forever the people. Forever the people, yeah. Have you ever returned to South America after that Oasis experience? No, no unfortunately. I really liked uh, Buenos Aires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we spent a bit of time there, which was really good. Totally. Uh, Mexico was okay. I like going to the pyramid there. Uh, but no I, ha no, I haven't. But I would, I'm waiting for you guys to, you know, to, to invite me over. I would love to go. I, love to, I was thinking yeah, I've, yeah, I've yeah. never been to Peru. I'd, I'd yeah, love yeah. to come there and... And uh, and see, I really I enjoyed South America, you know. But that's probably because I've got Latin blood, you see. I don't, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm being half Italian, you know. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, 